Good morning, English 121 students. This is Miss Douglas Harris, and I'm going to be modeling how to analyze the interaction of two or more ideas in a text. So we're going to be looking at this in relation to our writing, looking at how we write about two or more ideas that are interacting. And so the first thing we're going to do is read the question. How does the limbic brain interact with the reptilian brain? So I'm looking for two concepts, and so I'll note them here just to help keep my lens really clear. I'm looking for the limbic brain or the limbic region, and I'm looking for the reptilian region of the brain. And I'm looking for how they interact. That's my third piece of the puzzle here. And so that means they should be talking to each other in essence the interaction, talking to or engaging with each other. So now that I'm really clear on what it is I'm looking for, I'm gonna review the portion of the text that I read for homework last night. So last night for homework, we all read paragraphs one through eight in chapter three. We summarized each paragraph and we made connections for each paragraph. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So I know from reading and summarizing last night that the most important sections are actually going to be paragraphs four and on. So this section is talking about the reptilian brain. And then down here, we're looking at the limbic region. And I know I wanna focus in on how they build on each other, or how they're interacting with one another. And so based on the knowledge that I'm activating from my reading last night, I know that there are certain parts of the limbic brain that talk directly to the reptilian brain. And so what I'm thinking of here is the RAS. So I have the thalamus, which is in the, reptil in the limbic part of the brain. And I know it's in the limbic part of the brain because of this sentence here. It says, there are three specific structures of the limbic brain. And then I have three bullets, and that tells me these are the three structures. So the thalamus is a part of the limbic region. And I remember it saying that the RAS right here lets, lets in information to the thalamus, which then directs information to different parts of the brain. Now, I know the RAS is a part of the reptilian brain. How do I know that? I know that from activating my knowledge about my former reading. And so if I scroll up to the section on the reptilian brain, it has the RAS, the reticular activating system. And so just to double check and make sure that I know this is a part of the reptilian region, I'm gonna scroll up to make sure that's a part of the reptilian section. So here it says the reptilian region in the heading. So I know that anything within this heading is housed in the reptilian part of the brain. So I'm gonna start my response by saying the limbic region, or actually the <clears throat> reptilian Reptilian. That's, I always mess up spelling that word, so I have to double check and look at how it's written to make sure I spell it right. The reptilian region interacts with the limbic region. And so now I've said that they interact, and I know they interact because the thalamus is interacting with the RAS. So I'm going to add on here saying the RAS, which is in the reptilian region, comma, interacts with the thalamus, which is in the limbic region. So now I've answered the question, but I don't have any evidence yet. However, before I start, start to pull in evidence to explain, and our goal today is to explain, how these two regions are interacting, I want to point out our target language for today. One of the things we want to include is a relative clause with a relative pronoun which. So you can see here that I have a relative clause because I have two commas and that clause is describing the RAS, okay? So it has that relative pronoun which and it describes the RAS. I have that twice here 
And so when you're writing today, I wanna to make sure that you're including that relative clause with the relative pronoun which. Additionally, some words that I need to include were the limbic, reptilian, and ras and thalamus. And so you can see here that I have right now four of those target words. Now I'm gonna go back into my text to pull out um, evidence that shows how they're talking to each other. So I know that I've done these first two pieces. I'm gonna delete them so I can track what I need to do still. But now I need to think about how is the RAS interacting with the thalamus. So I'm gonna go back into my text and I'm gonna take a look at the thalamus region down here and see if it says how it's interacting with the RAS. It acts as the brain's communication dispatch hub. All incoming sensory information that the RAS lets in passes through the thalamus. So the RAS decides what information the thalamus gets with the exception of smell, it says. So I know that they're interacting, they're talking to each other. The RAS takes in information, decides what it's gonna send on to the thalamus, and then the thalamus gets that information. So they're talking to each other. So I'm gonna go on and add that in. The RAS, um, which is scanning the environment, Const which is constantly scanning the environment. So I'll add this on here. Besides what information is important. I'm going to check my spelling here. And sends, I actually don't need that comma. Important information to the. Now I've paraphrased this information, so I need to make sure I cite it. However, I'm gonna look back and see if there's anything I wanna quote. I could just paraphrase, that's okay. I just have to cite the information, but I might wanna quote anything, quote something. So I'm gonna take a look here. Mm. All incoming sensory information. So I'm thinking that phrase there, I wanna connect to my RAS. So the RAS, which is constantly scanning the environment for all, and I'm gonna put this in brackets because all was capitalized in the quote, but I wanna lowercase it here. So it's gonna live in the brackets, all incoming information. Besides what information is important to send to the thalamus. So I'm gonna go ahead now and add my in-text citation. For APA, we do the last name of the author. We do the year of publication, which for this text is 2005. I apologize for not including, I'm sorry, 2015. I apologize for not including this page in your packet, but that is the year. And then I'm gonna go back and check out my page. It's page 40. And now I'm going to add that here and I will delete out my notes that helped me find my key information. So this is how you determine the interactions between two key ideas in a text. You're going to do this for the limbic brain and the reptilian brain because it interacts in more than one way. You'll need to find a different way and then you'll also look at how the limbic brain develops the reptilian brain. That's what you're gonna do next.